is what we're coming to right now. So that in the past, to have a spiritual calling was always considered either a gift or a curse. You all know that. Because you're all here because you respond, you've responded to your own calling. You're saying yes to I remember hearing for the first time about the, the shaman's agreement with spirit. The shaman's agreement with spirit is that you call and spirit answers. You call and spirit answers. Not 80% of the time, not 99% of the time, 100% of the time. You call and spirit responds. It's pretty cool, huh? Until you read the small print in the back. <laughs> Remember what the contract says in the back? Spirit calls, you answer. Not 40% of the time, not 80% of the time, not when the kids are grown, not when my 401k plan is fully funded, not when I can get enough sleep. Not, you call, spirit calls, and you answer. 100% of the time. In the Andes, they know this is I me, I me, which is right relationship. Which also means living in a state of yes. Because they say if you have to wait for spirit to call before you answer, that is too late. That you have to live in yes, the state of yes with life. So in the past, it was a gift or a curse or both, to, to hear your calling. It was terrible. I'm too busy. I, you know, I, I remember my mid-twenties. It was clear that I had a calling to go. I was teaching at San Francisco State University. I was directing my own laboratory in the biology department, the mind-body medicine laboratory. I was one of the youngest faculty in the entire University of California system. And I left to go to the Amazon. My friends kept asking me, are you on drugs? And I said, no. I said, well, maybe you should be. <laughs> are you crazy? The, uh, so, we, and I kept going, wait a minute. I came back from the Amazon and, you know, came back to partying and having a great time, the things you do in your late twenties. And I didn't want to stop partying. I was having too good a time to go and do my own training as in the medicine way. So, and then my children came. And then I said to Spirit, wait, my children are too little. They're babies. Wait till they, give me another 10 years. So I kept using my children as an excuse with, with God, saying, they need me, wait. So the agreement that you make is 100%. It's 100%. And that used to be, that used to be an option in the past, <coughs> you could follow that calling or not. Where you could go the way of initiation or not. You could say no. Today is not an option anymore. Today that thin film that keeps, that, that separates that conscious, that ordinary consciousness from our unconscious selves, that wall is no longer there. There's no longer separation. Please don't point the camera at me, this scares me. <laughs> the, uh, that separation is gone. Today, all that is rested in that collective unconscious of humanity is bursting forth, is erupting, is volcanically erupting, and making us heal, making us heal our luminous energy field, clean the imprints that predispose us to live in certain ways, to marry certain people, to heal in the outer world, through our relationships or through our partners and bring it all home. And to do it very rapidly. To do it very, very rapidly. And we have the opportunity of doing that today because we didn't come here to spend another year in therapy. We came here, in fact, in the shamanic lore, there's, there's lore that says that before we were born, we were all gathered on a great, grassy plain, and a very big angel came out. And this angel said, you know, it's going to be a very challenging time in the earth. There's going to be famine. There's going to be war. There's going to be disease. There's going to be suffering. 
There's going to be storms. There's going to be rap music. <laughs> <laughs> Who wants to volunteer? <laughs> and we all said, yes. We all signed up because we didn't want to miss the party. We wanted to be part of the change that's coming and that's happening. And that's what we came here to do. And according to the lore of the Andean peoples, this year, this year, beginning December 21st and until the following summer solstice, which is the following December 21st in South America, for that year period, this is a year of awakening. This is a year of enlightenment, not only of healing ourselves, but of, that's the energy that's coming into the planet right now. It's one of the complete awakening of consciousness. Which is not a spiritual phenomenon. It's a neurological phenomenon. It's the awakening of new brain capabilities. And it's coming to us with every download of solar activity. That we can go and receive, and receive directly. But to do that, we have to, we have to be energetically receptive. So what I'd like to do is to show you and to experience with you a, one of the practices of how we can expand ourselves energetically to become receptive to this new information that's being downloaded, downloaded into the planet right now. And how to do this, when you, how you can take this back home with you as well. So in the in the shamanic lore, we have energy centers in the body. Chakras, if you would call them. People ask me sometimes, are sure. Do shamans have chakras? <laughs> you know, I thought chakras were Hindu. <laughs> and I asked them, do, do Africans have kidneys? <laughs> I thought kidneys were European. <laughs> So they're part of our luminous anatomy, yes. of course, they're universal. And the, so in the Eastern traditions you hear about seven chakras in the body. We work with eight chakras, with another chakra that is outside of the physical body, but inside your luminous energy field, a radiant sun above your head, the halo represented around the Christ, or the, the, the fire that you see around the Buddha. So these were not metaphors for some kind of, or some kind of uh, photoluminescence that Christ did. This is, this is the awakening of this eighth energy center, the eighth chakra. It's what we call the soul in the West. In fact, the job of the eighth chakra is to, when you die, you upload all of the information from your other seven chakras, and then the eighth chakra goes to find the family that you're going to be born through, where you're going to have the most fun. Right? Where you're going to learn the most. And the power of the eighth chakra is so great that it will even bring two people together for a single night of love in order for you to be born through. So this eight chakra is what we call the soul. When we're born, it downloads all of this information into these seven energy centers. And the eight chakra exists outside of time, but manifests in time. This is the manifestation of that eight chakra, the body that you have. So the life had discovered that they could, in the end, they call it the popo, the popo. That you could expand this luminous bubble to envelop you and to step momentarily outside of linear time. And that you could do this as well with a, with a partner. That you could hold someone else in sacred space outside of time. And it is at the core of the illumination process, which is the core healing practice that we work with, where we can reinform <coughs> the luminous energy field. We can download version 7.1 of the software that will help us create new bodies and age and heal and die differently. So I'd like for us to have an experience with this 
And then what we'll do when you're holding the sacred space is I want to call on the lineage of men and women, of medicine men and women of the Americas to come and be with us yeah. and to sit the sacred yeah. space with us. So Ruby, would you come and join me and yeah. let's demonstrate how we how we open the eighth chakra. This is Ruby, everyone. So Ruby, let's start with with hands in your heart in prayer pose. So drop into your breath. And observe Ruby for a moment as with an in-breath she begins to bring her hands up and into this radiant orb above her head, entering into this radiant orb this eighth chakra, and beginning to expand it in the same way that a peacock opens its fan, expanding this radiant sun. And enveloping herself in this radiant sun. And then gathering the folds of this luminous bubble, feeling its density, its weight, and bringing it up gradually into a radiant orb above her head again. And then bringing the energy of this radiant orb into your body, reinforming your body from that source that informs all life. Very, very, this is how you do the download. It's pretty simple. If you want the complicated version, you can buy three of my books. <laughs> <laughs> so let's, let's try it together. Let's try it together. And if you bump it to someone, that's all right. Hold it inside your, your own space of infinity. You can do it sitting, you can do it standing, wherever you're most comfortable. And follow Ruby and myself. Hands in your heart. A couple of deep breaths. And then on an in-breath, you begin to bring your hands up. And into this radiant sun above your head. Stepping into infinity. And begin to spread the folds of that golden ball to envelop you. And use your imagination, imagine. Enveloping yourself in this radiant orb. And allow your hands to relax by your sides. And feel yourself held in infinity. This is who you were before you were born, after you died. And close your eyes and try to look through the eyes of this eighth chakra. The source of the divine, the Wina Kocha of the Andes, the wellspring of the divine. Look through those eyes that have seen so much more than your physical eyes have seen. That have seen the birth and death of galaxies. That have tasted and drunk from the waters of infinity. And with your intention, call on the medicine men and women, the earth keepers, that have always been available to us, that are particularly ready and willing to work with us during this time of great opportunity and crisis.